What's up, guys? Welcome back to part three of the Firearm Power Scale. This is Trinkill, and if you haven't seen the first two videos, they're both over assault rifles. Go check them out. Part one of the assault rifles is over the fully automatics. Part two is over the semi-autos and three-round burst guns. Um, also, in part one, if, you're, if you've never seen the scale before, go back and check out the first half of part one uh, of the assault rifles because I kind of go over all the stats and explain them all in depth. Uh, so click it here and, and go check that out. Uh, but as always, uh, we're going to be looking at these stats. Time to kill, recoil, and we separate recoil into dependability and net force, which are explained in the first video. Uh, add time, which is reload time, mag size, raise time, and drop time. Those total up to 115 points, um, and over to the to the right, the percentages there are how much those are weighted into the into the uh, total score. At the end of the video, you'll see how the guns rank against each other and which is the best gun statistically based on these weights. Now, my first couple videos ran a little long. Uh, the first one had to because I had to explain a bunch of stuff, but the second one ran a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, so I'm kind of talking a little faster because I want to almost speed through this. I'm not going to leave anything out. Uh, but I, you know, I want to make sure we get through this in a normal time. Um, if you guys need to stop at any time, obviously you can pause it if you want to take a closer look at the numbers. And uh, without further ado, I guess let's get started. As always, the first stat we're going to be looking at is time to kill. And the first thing you're going to notice in contrast to the first two videos is that this one's got two numbers here and two numbers there and red stars and shit everywhere. And the reasoning behind that is because I had to do a maximum damage time to kill and a minimum damage time to kill, score them each separately, and then average those scores. And the main reason I had to do that was the Scorpion. And actually, I'm looking at the picture right now, and I'm noticing a typo. The Caparis, or however you pronounce it, I'm not Russian, so I'm not sure, um, should be 0.19 and 0.26 seconds, and the Scorpion should be 0.19 and 0.32 seconds. Uh, other than that, the scores look correct. So uh, I just want to interject that. My apologies, um, but this was a lot of numbers to type all in one little picture. So anyway, back to the Scorpion and why it f***ed everything up. The Scorpion has the highest damage of any submachine gun in the game, but it's got the shortest max damage distance, and it's only at 5 meters. And for those of you who don't know how short of a distance 5 meters is, if you get a Spaz-12 and you stand away from another player until the bullets no longer hurt that player when you shoot at them, that is 15 meters, or just over 15 meters. So take that distance and divide that by 3, and that is a 5 meter distance. So that is a very short uh, maximum damage distance. And the reason that it's starred and red and everything is that if you look at the red number 0.08 if you're if, if you're within that five meters the time to kill is phenomenal i mean it kills in two bullets which is unlike anything else in the game um but if you average that out and you take that damage and extrapolate that out over the normal distance of a submachine gun it averages out about 0.19 so i did it that way because it's a situational thing it's very very unlikely that you're going to be within five meters for you know say half your kills when you're using the scorpion so that i wanted to explain that sorry i got a little long-winded there but uh anyway back to the weapons um, you can see that the AK-74U and the MP5K have the fastest max damage time to kill, and that's simply because their bullet damage is higher than the other guns. They have a 40 damage per bullet instead of 30. Uh, they do have a slower fire rate, though, which kind of bites them in the ass when you get back to the minimum damage time to kill. You can see they come in at .32 seconds along with the Scorpion, um, and the rest of the guns come in at .26, and... I want to point one thing out. Once you get past the minimum damages, all submachine guns, no matter what their max damage is, the Scorpion at 50, AK-74, and MP5 at 40, and the rest at 30, the minimum damage is always 20 damage, which is why every gun other than the slower fire rate guns have a faster long distance time to kill. So that's an interesting fact there. Um, so I know this is a lot of info to take in, but if you pause the video, really examine your favorite guns and you want to see uh, how they compare score-wise, other than the Scorpion, obviously understand that's a situational time to kill and it's very hard to calculate that any other way than I did. So uh, pause the video and check it out if you want to. If not, let's move on to recoil here. 
Now, for those of you who haven't seen the first two videos, we separate recoil into two subcategories, dependability and net force. Uh, recoil as a total stat gets 30 points towards the weighting system, and dependability makes up 20 of those points. And when we come to anything to do with recoil, whether it be dependability or net force, the Scorpion is king. And for any of you who have ever used it, you'll know that this thing does not move at all. You can put rapid fire on it, and you can be shooting across the map, and you will hit almost every bullet. This thing is insane. And, you know, if, if it is going to move, it's going to move straight up. And it's, well, I can tell you it's not going to move, but if it does, it's going to barely move straight up. And that's just why it's so amazing. I mean, that's why the AK-74U is so popular, because it shoots like the AK-47, straight up the body. So you can aim at the chest, and it'll go right up to the head. Um, you can see the Mac 11 Spectre, Kiparis, and PM-63 all shoot up and to the right at about a 45-degree angle. It's not exact, but it's somewhere around there. The AK-74U, as mentioned before, along with the Uzi, are going to average straight up um, but once you get so bad in dependability um, and recoil like the Uzi is you just have no clue where that thing's going to kick I mean on average it's going to go up but it could go up and left it could go up and right this thing could even go down it's, it's insane how much kick that has which is why it's at the bottom of the uh, the score list here um, and the MP fell, uh, MPL <laughs> MP fell, the MP5K and the MPL basically shoot up but they also shoot a little bit to the right probably even less than this arrow indicates but I wanted to make sure it was the arrow was tilted enough so you could visually see a difference between that and the uh, the line that goes straight up so anyway again scorpion on top Uzi on the bottom and uh, everything else in between I mean it's 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 pretty uh, pretty obvious if you take a peek at those uh, so let's move on to net force now, I know the Uzi was on the bottom of dependability and is near the top on net force, but again, as I've said in the first couple videos, the net force is just not a 100% accurate way to measure what I'm trying to measure here. And if you go back and watch the first videos if you need an explanation on what net force is. Um, but uh, it's the best I could do in a bad system as far as the recoil is concerned, so don't put too much thought into it. All you really need to know about either recoil stat is that the uh, Scorpion is a bad son of a bitch. And uh, all the other guns are, are pretty close, actually. Uh, but anyway, I mean, you can just see on the score that the Scorpion just blows everything out of the water again. Uh, so let's move on to add time. And there's not a lot to notice about add time. Uh, the Caparis comes in at 1.3 seconds. Uh, the PM63 and AK-74U come in quickly behind it at 1.4, 1.5 uh, the thing I want you to notice next is that the Mac 11 through the Uzi are all separated by 0.1 seconds, which is... I mean, you almost can't even tell that in-game. Uh, and the last thing I want you to see is that the MP5 is slow as balls when, it's com when it comes to reloading. Uh, I mean, two seconds for a for a submachine gun? I mean, that's slower than most of the assault rifles. That's just... That's insane to me, but... Uh, anyway, so the Caparis comes in at a, a perfect 20 points, and the MP5K falls very short at 13. Um, as far as mag size is concerned, there's not a lot of differences. Um, basically, you've got five guns that are around 30 bullets and four guns that are around 20. So that's the big difference. I mean, it's not like the MPL and the Uzi, those two bullets are going to make a humongous difference. It's kind of like the Galil getting an extra five bullets. It doesn't mean a lot to most people because you usually reload after every kill anyway. Uh, but anyway, so you can see the points there. And the last stat that we look at are the Raisin Drop Times. And Mac 11 and the Scorpion come in as the fastest guns, which makes sense because they're physically the smallest. And the AK-74U comes in as the slowest to raise and drop, and that's simply because they tried to make it a halfway gun, like halfway between a submachine gun and an assault rifle. Uh, so it's only fair that it takes a little longer to pull out. And finally, we take all of these scores from all the different stats, we mush them all together, and we get the total FPS score. FPS standing for Firearm Power Scale. Shting! Trademarked. <laughs> anyway, uh, the first thing you're probably going to notice is the AK-74U came in fourth out of nine guns. Yes, it did. And let me tell you why. The AK-74U is not overpowered. Everybody gives it so much shit. Oh, it's so overpowered. Maybe it's overpowered for when you get it, and that's the only reason it's more used than the other guns. The AK-74U, you get at level 17. Now, if you look at the three guns above it, the Scorpion, which is very situational, doesn't have a lot of application in most games because it's a very, very close-range submachine gun. But the Caparis and the Spectre, you don't get till the low 40s. So you're 75% of the way through a level before you get those guns. So 
if you're using the AK-74U, which you get at level 17, like 10% of the way through your level, why would you switch gears and change to a gun that's got a completely different recoil table than the gun you're used to? Uh, so that's why people use it more often. They have it longer, and they don't want to switch to get to you know to get used to another gun. Not to mention the thing's got a grenade launcher attachment. So for those noob tubers out there, they're out there high fiving and shit. Um, so that may start some controversy. I don't know. Of course, I say that like there's a million people that are gonna watch this video. But <laughs> so for the hundred people that see this, uh, you know, maybe you can fight amongst yourselves. I don't know. Um, but I would probably drop the scorpion down a little bit. Now raw numbers, it scores high because it's got a very very good recoil. But you take that recoil away from the scorpion, and it's kind of dooky. Um, I, if I were you guys, I would be using the Caparis, the Spectre, the AK-74U, or the MPL. I've got a, I've got a, uh, actually my father uses the MPL and swears by it. So, you know, try, try the guns out. The submachine guns are very, very, uh, situational and opinionated. You know, you got this guy who likes the, the Uzi and this guy who likes the Caparis and it just, try the guns out. I can't stress that anymore, but... I put this score together so you maybe try them in this order. I don't know. You guys do what you want to do with it. I hope you learned something, though. I know I did as I was putting them together. Um, oh, also, one thing I do not have noted here. The AK-74U, these stats that I used for this score are pre-patch. So the, the, the 74U has been nerfed, actually. So it's probably a little worse than it shows here. Um, and the Caparis and the MPL have a very slightly slower aim down sight time. But other than that... Um, everything here is is pretty accurate, pretty cool. Uh, I think the next video I'm going to do is shotguns. I haven't decided yet. Uh, that one seems pretty fun to do, but I don't know. I'll let you guys know when uh, when I decide. And until next time, hope you guys come back for the uh, the next videos. I've got shotguns, light machine guns, sniper rifles, and pistols left. And uh, then we'll be completely done, and we'll be ready to do the guns for Modern Warfare 3. Um, so yeah, guys, come back, check me out, and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.